Hello and welcome to the latest Fund Manager video interview. Today I have with me Dale Nichols, Fund Manager of the Fidelity China Special Situations Investment Trust. Dale, thank you for your time today. Thanks, Carl. Great to be here. It's been an eventful year, um, to say the least. Um, in terms of a 12-month period, um, Fidelity China Special Situations has produced some really strong numbers, um, up 55% in share price terms to the end of September. Um, what have been the key drivers um, that have influenced performance over the year? Yeah, I think you know that. I think you know the, the the holdings that we've had in the sectors that we've just been talking about. What we'd I guess we'd call the new China, uh, the consumer space, um, technology, and and I guess I'd add healthcare as well. So these are just parts of the economy that we know are going to grow um, over time. So exposure to those areas, um, and I think you know looking at some of the names that have contributed, potentially some names that. Um, you know, were not as well known that are starting to become recognised by the market uh, in terms of in terms of the value of these companies, how they're executing, and the value they have to some of the some of the other companies. Um, I'd also add one one interesting area that's 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 contributed um, is actually in materials, um, and it's an and it's an interesting space in the sense that you've got I think many sectors um, in China uh, that are consolidating rapidly, so hugely fragmented sectors that um you know will consolidate so being able to invest in i think the emerging leaders within within these areas um you know is is has, has been you know has been quite positive for performance over time so areas like like paint uh the paint sector is is very fragmented but but rapidly consolidating and it's a business you know that, that can really generate strong returns over time um if you're able to execute and develop a brand over time and we're seeing you know, companies emerging in that space that that we think are going to be market leaders and we have just going to have much greater market share of, of a really significant market over time could you perhaps give us one or two uh, stock examples in that space yeah a company called sk shu um is is i think probably a good example um a share market listed um you know, growing coverage, I think, and and sort of you know increasingly you know being understood by the market, but just a, a very strong record uh, of execution, uh, particularly on the B two B side of the of the, of the business. Um, you know, working with the big developers, which is in itself as a market that's consolidating as well, just becoming a, a really valued supplier um, in in that market, and you know, getting getting some you know pretty impressive pricing relative to to some of the international players um, in the market. So. You know, really beginning to assert it, assert itself, and and I think you know it was definitely going to be one of the leaders in the market, looking out five to ten years. The trust's um, gearing levels um, at the end of September stood at twenty six percent. How does this compare, say, to compared to the last three years? And um, just so we can get a sense on um, how high that gearing level is compared to history. And also, um, did you increase gearing following the um, the Obviously, heavy stock market sell-off in the first quarter of the year. Yeah, um, I, I focus on the net gearing, um, and right now we'd sort of be low twenties for that. Um, and the gearing has has you know has really moved over time, um, and it's you know I think really one of the the benefits, obviously, of the structure itself being able to you know to capitalize on opportunities, and we've sort of you know in various times in the market you've seen that swing from you know probably you know around 10% geared to high 20s um and and you know exactly as you've just said you know when we did see the big sell off um earlier in the year um you know that was a real opportunity to 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 really add to some of the of the long positions um we've also you know increased exposure uh, in the unlisted space um over that time as well so Again, we've you know just in that period we've come from sort of low teens up to up to over twenty percent, really sort of capitalising on on the opportunities that we've seen as a result of uh, of, of of the sell off. And since the initial uh, COVID nineteen outbreak, um, China has managed to largely keep a lid on uh, new cases, um, at the, and at the same time, China's stock market has had a rapid bounce back um, from the COVID nineteen pandemic. Are the two connected? Um, and helped uh, boost investor sentiment, or are there other factors at play that have um, behind this stock market rally in China since the end of March? I think absolutely. I mean, if you just think about, 
you know, the biggest unknown factor that's going to drive, you know, both, you know, economic direction, but also economic policy, you know, in the coming, you know, years, it's really going to be, you know, the degree to which you've, you've got things under control in terms of, in terms of, you know, the virus and the pandemic. So China's clearly done a, a great job of that. Um, you know, things are very much under control. You know, there's, there's been a couple of, you know, small outbreaks, uh, but, you know, the government's really acted quickly to get on top of that. So, you know, you know, you know the sense we get is that you know, things are very much back to normal um, in China. Um, so I think that's, you know, it's clearly been a positive for the market, particularly in a relative sense. Um, you know, um, it's things are things are much more normal in China than anywhere else in the world. Um, and I think you can have confidence. There's just there's just really low risk around around dealing with the problem, um, and it's a clearer path back to growth. Um, so so I think that's you know at least from a relative sense, you know it's it's been a really significant factor. And in terms of those um, growth figures for China's economy, how far can the numbers be trusted? Um, and also related to that, how do you get accurate data when you're researching um, investment opportunities? I mean, it depends which data series you're talking about. I think, you know, it makes sense to look at a range of, of, of data series. I think if you're looking just at the overall GDP number, you've got to assume there's, you know, there's some smoothing, um, you know, uh, definitely in that number, in that number over time. Um, but, you know, we look at a range of factors and direction is, is really more important. And that's sort of what we focus on. But even more important than that is really the data we get from companies. Um, so I think, again, it really helps to, you know, have a team on the ground that, you know, just really following actual trends, speaking to management of companies and, and just staying on top of what's happening in the businesses themselves. That's, you know, for us, you know, much more important than the sort of overall economic stats, although we do obviously follow them pretty closely. And finally, um, following um, Joe Biden's um, US election victory, um, do you anticipate that the trade war between the US and China may now cool? Yeah, we'll have to we'll have to watch. As we know, you know, um, you know, the, the sort of I guess general policy towards China is one of the few areas where, you know, both sides, both political parties were, I think, probably probably more aligned. So I wouldn't expect, you know, too much change, you know, you know, really, you know, in the in the short term. I think I think, you know, what 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 investors will will you know, I think look to or hope to see is just a bit more predictability in terms of policy. Um, and, you know, at least at the initial signs, you know, we get is that, you know, one factor, you know, in terms of new policy will just be really in terms of building, you know, competitiveness, really focusing on building, you know, competitiveness, particularly on the tech side, um, you know, on, on the US side, which, you know, I think, you know, it, you know, you know, people, you know, in every part of the world would probably welcome. Um, but, but like I said, I think, you know, probably the bigger thing that people are looking, looking to is just, uh, just probably more predictability around, uh, around policy. But I wouldn't expect any major changes in policy, at least um, in the short term. Dale, thank you very much for your time today. Thanks, Kyle.